This image was taken using a technique called high dynamic range photography. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how it's done. I'm gonna to explain to you what HDR photography is. I'm gonna talk about the camera settings that you need to use. And also I'm gonna talk you through an edit so you can take images just like it. Welcome to the Photo Genius HDR Photography Challenge. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I upload weekly photography tutorials. I share tips and tricks. Occasionally I do gear reviews as well. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. This is the Photo Genius Photography Challenge number 17. And this month I'm asking you to have a go at HDR or high dynamic range photography. Now, what is HDR? Well, HDR is a technique that allows you to capture an image that has a wider tonal range than you would normally get in a single image. It's a very popular technique. I use it myself. In fact, if you do a search in, on Instagram for the hashtag HDR, you will see there's over 11 million images posted. So it's a very popular look. Now, for those of you that may be new to this channel, here's a very quick catch up. In March 2020, as you know, the world began to go into lockdown due to COVID-19. So I launched the Photo Genius Photography Challenge as a way of giving people something to do while staying safely at home. I handpick every single theme myself as a way of encouraging people to try different things, learn new techniques, but most importantly, get the camera out of auto so you can start exploring the manual functions and taking control of your digital camera. Every single um, challenge has a different theme, but also a different hashtag so you can share your images to social media and I and others can see them. This month's hashtag is PGC17. Now, of course, you can share your images to Instagram, but we also have a free to join Facebook group and I'll put details in the links below this video. So let's begin by taking a look at what HDR actually is and what's meant by the term high dynamic range. Well, HDR photography is a technique where we take multiple exposures of the same scene, but using different exposure values. We then take those different exposures, those separate images, and we merge them together to create one final image which captures a wider tonal range than we would normally get in the single image. Now that may sound very complicated, so let's go back to basics. So to help explain what is meant by a high dynamic range, I've set the camera up in a different part of the office and I've chosen this spot because of the big windows here. I've also set the camera up to expose for me and this gray card. If we look at this gray card, you will see six individual squares white through to black and you should be able to make out every single square. Now the big problem with this room of course is there's lots more light going on outside. The outside area is overexposed. Now the camera cannot capture those bright areas and the light in this room which is significantly lower at the same time. The only way we can do this with still photography is to take a series of images and this is where HDR comes in. So I'm not doing stills at the moment, I'm doing a video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the exposure settings on the camera now to compensate for the windows. So what I'm effectively gonna do, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna increase the shutter speed and you will see that as I increase the shutter speed, we let less light into the camera and we start to improve the exposure on the light coming through the windows. That looks pretty good now. So now you can see the clouds and the detail in the windows, but you can't see me anymore. This is the problem with light and areas or scenes that have a high dynamic range. So if we can't capture everything in a single image, we simply take a standard image for the midtones, a second image that is intentionally underexposed but retains the highlights, and a third image that is overexposed and reveals details in the shadows. Now using suitable software, in this case Lightroom, we can merge the three exposures together to create a high dynamic range image. Now, before I show you how to merge the images together to create one HDR image, 
It's time to talk camera settings. Now there's a couple of ways in which you can do this. One is to use a technique called bracketing. Now I actually made a video um, all about bracketing just a few weeks back and I think it's a video you should definitely check out. So I'll put a link in the description below this video and I'll also pop one up here for you as well. But another technique and the one that I'm going to feature in this video is to go full manual. Now because in Brisbane we're currently in lockdown, I'm going to demonstrate how to do this here in the office. So for this first demonstration we're going to use a Nikon camera. In a moment I will do the same with a Canon camera. This is a Nikon D3500 set to the manual mode and we have here at the shutter speed, aperture and ISO. The first thing we're going to do is make sure the ISO is low. Default for me is usually 200. Next thing I'm going to do is adjust the aperture. Now which aperture you use is up to you but I'm going to select f8 by holding down the button on the top of the camera and dialing to the right. F8 should give me a nice sharp image with a decent depth of field. So the next thing I'm going to do is adjust the camera shutter speed and this is where the light meter come in. Here you have the minus side, here the plus side. We want to aim for the zero. Plus is too bright, minus is too dark. Zero is balanced. At the moment the uh, meter is telling us we're going to be overexposed. So I'm going to increase the shutter speed by dialing to the right with the dial. You'll see the shutter speed increases. And if you keep an eye on the camera's light meter, it will start to move to the middle. And when it hits the middle, it means that according to the camera, we should have a balanced exposure. So this is picture number one. Focus, take the picture. Press the shutter to reset. And we're now going to take two more photos. Remember, for the next picture, we want to be underexposed. So I'm increasing the shutter speed. This lets less light into the camera. And you'll see the meter now reads that we're doing a minus exposure or we're under by one stop. Picture number two. Press the shutter button to clear the screen once again. Dial into the left, resets the meter. But I want an overexposed picture for number three, so I'm going to keep dialing to the left. Three clicks gives me an overexposure of one stop. Focus, take the picture, and we've now got three images. Over, under, balanced. So we're now going to do exactly the same thing with a Canon camera starting with the ISO. I'm going to set it to 200 which again is generally my default. Then we're going to look at the aperture holding down the AV button and turning the dial on the camera it allows us to change the aperture on the Canon camera. Again I'm going to dial in f8. Then we need to check the meter. On the Canon cameras just press the shutter button lightly. It wakes up the meter and you'll see a marker appear and then disappear. It's over to the plus side, which means at the moment we're going to overexpose. So I'm going to press the button again to wake up the meter. Dial to the right to increase the shutter speed. This affects the meter. Once it's in the middle, we can take picture number one. Slight adjustment. Picture number one, done. And then just like with the Nikon, we're now going to do our underexposed image by increasing the shutter speed. You'll see the meter react. Once we're at the minus one, this is one stop under, we can take picture number two, focus, picture number two, and once again, because we want to do now an overexposed image, we're going to dial to the left to slow the shutter down, this takes us back to zero, and another three clicks to the left will take us to the plus one, which is one stop overexposed, focus, press the button, picture number three. So now, We've got our three images, our over, under, and balanced exposure. Now when taking your images, a really good tip is to use a tripod to keep the camera steady and maybe avoid shooting subjects where there is movement. This will help the software merge your images together seamlessly. Now once you've got your images, all you've got to do is import them into some software to turn them into an HDR image. I'm going to demonstrate this for you using Adobe Lightroom. Now don't worry if you don't have Lightroom, there is a free trial available on their website, plus there's lots of other HDR software options available, and I'll list some of the more popular ones in the description below this video. Okay, so all I've done so far is imported the three images into Lightroom. Over to the left, we have our first image, which is all about the mid-tones. The second image is all about the highlights. It is an underexposed image. And number three is the overexposed image, which blows out the highlights, but is great for bringing out the shadow detail. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge these three images together to create a single HDR image. And to do this, I'm gonna start by highlighting the three images. 
I'm then going to go up to photo down to photo merge select HDR now the first thing Lightroom is going to do is create a preview this may take a few moments depending on how large the image files are now once you have your preview you can select which deghost amount deghosting is all about getting rid of things that may have moved while you were taking your three exposures I've got mine set to low here so I'm now going to click on to merge and after a few moments we now have our preview so let's just shrink these down so we're going to go through the images in um, sequence so this is our normal image this is our underexposed this is our overexposed and this is our HDR image so I really hope you enjoyed the video and you're up for taking part in this month's challenge don't forget if you are taking part and you're sharing your images to social media to please use the hashtag PGC17 that way I and others can find your images and I really do love seeing what you guys come up with if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow you can leave your comments down below and don't forget I put out new videos every single week so if you're not already subscribed please consider subscribing hope to see you again sometime soon see ya bye